hi there welcome to my video series today we are going to look at some of the commands that can be used by the MongoDB administrator basically to import or export data or dumping the data for uh, easy backup then we'll look at all the various uh, different binary files that are available for easy administration so let me start my mongodb script server so here you can see that I have executed a shell script uh, and this is nothing but a shell script which I have created to start mongodb I'll show you what is there in that let this mongodb server start So here it started and if you look at this it just does a CD into the MongoDB location and executes the MongoDB binary right so let's get into the shell so Mongo is a JavaScript console where you will spend most of your time working with MongoDB like if you want to insert data update delete these kind of task, CRUD task can be done with in this MongoDB shell. Let me show what databases I have. So here I have four databases and by default you will have something called admin and local and I have created my DB and test with some data. Let me exit this <coughs> so as you know Mongo data content is stored in BSON format or BSON or binary script object notation right it's in a binary format but it is very similar to the JSON format so let's look at a couple of tools on importing and exporting the data if you want to export complete table or complete database you can do with these tools. I'm going to export using Mongo export command hyphen D. This is my database. If and see this is my collection. I'm going to say test data dot JSON. And it says it has exported two records. Let's quickly get that. So here you can see there are two records which I have uh, in this collection and they have been exported in a JSON format. If you, ha if you have some JSON data which you want to import, you can just uh, use mongo import command, right? And you can specify what database you can Im want to import to and what collection you want to import. And mongodb will import it automatically, even if that collection is non-existing. So we have looked at how to export and import. So let's look at uh, other tools like uh, taking a complete binary backup of the MongoDB databases. So there's a nifty tool called MongoDump. So what it does is it takes the content and the structure of all the databases in your MongoDB and dumps into a location called dump, right? So here you can see it has created, it has executed some command called all dbs and uh, for each of those database and system indexes, it has dumped everything into a dump location, right? So here it says this is my database, this is my <coughs> test binary JSON, this is my collection. So let me show you what this dump location contains. So as you know admin is a default database and uh, I have my DB in which there are some chunks metadata and system directories and this is my collection and its data is stored in the binary format. So if you want to see this data in a readable format you can take a look at that using uh, BSON dump. And you can 
refer to this location test my db so let's say I want to convert this into a JSON format I can just say test data dot JSON so it says two objects found right so here you can say that you are successfully able to read the data of the JSON to the JSON format so let's look at some more commands now let's look at the mongo stat command so this doesn't output any files or uh, any log files but it'll continuously run and gives an overview of the status of the currently running mongodb instances so you'll find it more useful once you are once you get familiar with the MongoDB. So let's talk something about the BSON format. BSON or BSAN is it is a binary JSON. Right? So it's a binary encoded serialized JSON like documents. It's a binary JSON and not a raw text data. And BSON is JSON with two important additions. So one, as I said previously, is it's a binary representation. And the second one is it includes data types beyond the normal JavaScript, which are normally supported by JavaScript. One is the object ID type, which is uh, a default type that is used by MongoDB. And along with object ID, there are uh, different other data types like uh, date time, etc. And for someone who is interested um, in creating some programs in Python, Java, PHP, etc. So there are these uh, drivers that are available in MongoDB website which you can download and use along with your programming language. So as you can see there are drivers for C, C++, C Sharp, Node.js and other popular languages. So some of these are community uh, driven drivers and some are available with MongoDB itself. So let's look at some more commands which can help the MongoDB administrator. So let's look at something called a MongoPerf. So MongoPerf is a utility for checking input output performance of a server independent of the MongoDB and it performs simple timed random disk IOS and MongoPerf has couple of modes and these are called MMF is equal to false or MMF equal to true so these are the different modes we'll see what those are so when you say MMF colon false this is a mode and it's completely generic and random physical IO test and with MMF colon true let me type that so in this mode the test is a benchmark of memory mapped file based input output so this is a good baseline test of a system including the operating system virtual memory so if you want to do that you have to enable MMF equal to true so let's look at a couple of examples with MMF equal to false and uh, MMF equal to true mode double quotes and threads 10 mongo perf so let me explain what we are trying to do here so here we are 
starting a test run with 10 threads and performing random physical reads. And again, please note that MongoPerf gradually adds more threads so that you can see the difference in performance with more concurrency. And the file size we are specifying is 100 MB. Okay, so it should be colon here. <clears throat> so first it will create a file size of 100 MB. That will start different threads. And now it has started the second thread. And similarly it will go on till 10 threads. Let me cancel this. So let's check with the MMF true mode. <coughs> So here we are saying that uh, use the physical I.O. and test random reads and write via memory mapped file regions. So in this case caching will come into effect. So you should see very high read speeds if your data file is very small. And again remember that speeds that begin to approach physical random I.O. speed as the data file becomes larger than RAM. Okay, let me check this. Okay, couldn't parse JSON options. Okay, let me. Okay, so it's now doing tests on physical input output operations. So this mode is particularly helpful when you are when you set up a RAID or red, redundant array of inexpensive inexpensive disks. So the MongoDB administrator can use these various commands and see what are the physical input output operations. Let me cancel this. Let's look at some more commands. So there's something called as Mongo files. So this command makes it possible to manipulate the files that are stored in the MongoDB instance in the grid FS objects so it provides an interface between the objects stored in your file system and the grid fs and for uh, people who are not aware of grid fs uh, it's just it's a convention for storing large files in mongodb database and uh, there are some important options that are supported by this mongo files like list put get delete search etc so let me show each of those in detail mongo files you need to say host and here my server is on the local host I'm going to refer to that my DB and I'll say put temp test.lp okay let me touch this file so it has added this file as part of the grid fs and uh, so remember that put 
it copies the specified file from the local file system into grid FS storage so by default it will copy this file from your local FS into the MongoDB grid file system and along with this you can also use the get option so let's uh, list So it's going to connect to the GridFS file system and list the contents of it. Similarly, a user can perform search and delete operations. And just say temp. So this is going to disconnect the local file system with the grid FS. Right. So let's look at one final command which is called uh, mongoose. So mongoose stands for MongoDB Shroud. So just remember that uh, this is a routing service for MongoDB Shroud configurations and that is going to process your queries from the application layer and determines the location of the data in the shrouded cluster. So using shrouding you can partition your existing data across your cluster and this helps you find the data. Right. So that's it for today. I hope uh, you enjoyed my video. Thank you.